Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Boyan Smudia. Hey, Boyan. Welcome back. Hey, hello, Vasco. Nice to be here again. Absolutely. Pleasure to have you here. So Tuesday is Team Tuesday, of course. But uh, before we dive into the team topic, do share with us, what's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? Ooh. <laughs> the, usually the last one is always on my mind because I'm reading it and uh, I have that uh, trait that I want to apply some learnings immediately in my team. You know, so I'm uh, just reading the Lean Startup. But if I honestly go back uh, to the beginning of my career, then definitely it's Agile Estimating and Plan. I would say it's the dearest book that I have read from this Agile world. And uh, tell us a little bit more. What are the key lessons or key ideas that stuck with you over the years from that book? Mm -hmm. Practically, uh, the biggest uh, thing uh, which I learned is uh, that uh, you cannot uh, have a fixed scope and fixed deadline in one sentence shown on the board and presented to the stakeholders. You know, you need to balance something in order uh, to achieve, uh, let's say, so something meaningful. And uh, that is from agile estimating and planning. I would uh, say the the idea which I, uh, you know, took. Of course, there are a lot of uh, concrete uh, practices uh, uh, which are showing uh, how really it uh, uh, can be applied in a world. And uh, whenever uh, I am talking with uh, some youngster, uh, Scrum uh, masters or wannabes, uh, uh, that is the only book which I recommend to them. I say, read this book and then come to me. We can then talk. But First, read this book, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important for us to be able to help those that are starting their career uh, or facing the, a specific problem for the first time that we can share some uh, some reading material or a podcast or, or a YouTube video, whatever that might be, but something that helps them uh, grasp the concepts and understand the stories behind the concepts in a very clear way. That's, you know, our job to figure out what, what is doing that in a clear way so that we can then build the conversation, right? Because a lot of the conversations we have with our peers, they are built on specific concepts that we then put together over time, a little bit like Lego blocks. So it's it's really important, as you said, to have that, that ability to refer to a resource and then pick the concepts and then build that wider understanding that we want to build, but with the concepts that are on that resource. Great, like you are doing, yeah. Uh, which is exactly what we do with all of our guests here on the podcast. Indeed, indeed. And uh, actually, one of the original ideas of the podcast would be exactly to have like a specific episode. You could send a friend, hey, here's this episode on this topic. You talked about it yesterday. Maybe you get some ideas from here. And uh, that's also why the podcast is so focused. In every day, there's a specific topic that we talk about. Cool. Well observed, well observed. So, Boyan, now we talk about teams because, of course, we mostly work with teams. We work also with organizations, but every day we work with the teams that we are Scrum Masters for. So share with us a story of a team. Tell us a little bit about their context so that we understand, you know, is it a big or small project, big or small team? Are they co-located, you know, distributed, whatever that might be, the important context. And then walk us through the steps, how that team developed that small pattern that ultimately grew and became a problem for the team. Great. Uh, I have uh, one uh, exact uh, story, which is uh, definitely on the pattern to the destruction. Uh, the team is about uh, ideal Scrum team. Uh, I remember it was about seven, eight uh, persons. We were all co-located. It was uh, before the corona started. We were working practically in one room, uh, on one project uh, delivering one product for which is already in production you know so everything was uh, pretty nicely set up we had a 
product owner, uh, we had a uh, uh, whole uh, cross-functional, uh, you know, uh, team set up and when you now hear this you would say what uh, what was uh, let's say the, yeah it sounds like a failure. perfect team yeah, right it's not, that, that, that is uh, when, when the things are uh, let's say set up perfectly and they uh, you know turn out to be something uh, I would say pretty nasty one then it hurts double and uh, uh, what was the biggest uh, problem? The biggest uh, problem uh, was uh, that the team was uh, detached from the business objectives. T- tell, was, us, tell us a little bit more about that. Give us an example of what yeah, that exactly, looked like. Exactly. Uh, so practically the team was there in ideal conditions, but working there eight hours per day. They didn't invest uh, themselves into uh, really having something which they deliver to be their ownership. You know, They just do their job. So tell us a little bit more. What yeah. does that mean? Not investing to gain exactly. ownership. Exactly. That that really means uh, that uh, they uh, didn't uh, care about uh, real outcomes. They cared only jo- about uh, Jira tasks. I have a task. I will do the task. Task will be done. I don't care about whether that task essentially converted by some magic to some application in production will be used by 10 hundreds of thousand people, whether they will enjoy using this. I just care about that I finish my job. So that was pretty, you know, narrow tunnel vision. And uh, by uh, doing uh, such a thing, uh, a lot of uh, people lost the motivation. And uh, practically they looked only what they were working and uh, me as a scrum master allow this to happen that is really my uh, i would say biggest failure of course when the failure is it's failure of the whole team but uh, as you said who is the guilty person usually scrum master is a dead person or product owner unfortunately so t- tell us a little bit more because this is a very interesting case yeah. right like as you were describing the setup of the team mm-hmm. uh i i was imagining a different outcome i was imagining a manager coming in and interfering and breaking the setup i was imagining uh the product owner not being involved and not communicating the vision but well, as you described it it was more coming from the team members themselves that they were exactly. kind of doing the work because they wanted to do the work but not really caring about the outcome the impact of that work what what were some of the possible reasons for that behind that attitude uh well uh th- that is uh, one of the let's say the biggest you know pain lessons uh, pa- painful lessons uh, uh, even if you have a pretty phenomenal uh, you know setup and th- there are no interferences and everything else if there is the lack of the real motivation in part of the team and they uh, fall out to some feature uh, factory workers you know uh, like that mentality of i am working in a factory give me the task i will do this if there is not a team which is uh, not uh, just a team in order to help each other but the team in order to produce something tangible and useful then there is a, that a failure. And I believe, honestly, that we missed uh, this uh, small chain, that we were even, uh, you know, team, but we lost focus on why we are doing the stuff. We are not moving the Jira tickets because we need to have a salary at the end of the month. We are uh, moving the Jira tickets because we need to have something in production for our users to like it, to de- be delightful. And we forgot about this, you know, probably, and probably. How, that how did, so the, I, the question in my mind is still, but how is it possible? Like you have a good product owner, management is not coming in and interfering. Uh, you have a scrum master who's there with you every day, but you still lose the motivation. Like, uh, do you have any insights? Like what, let's imagine that somebody mm-hmm. out there is working with a team that might be falling into the same pattern. Yes. How can we be ready to detect before it happens to detect that yes. pattern. Yes. Uh, honestly, I, I, I really do not uh, know how was it possible, really, but I experienced this. Uh, that is even why it's double hurdle. But I can share with the uh, audience, uh, let's say, what are the patterns that you can uh, feel and see this, and uh, then uh, maybe to do something uh, which I wasn't in, uh, clever enough uh, to uh, employ. Uh, some of the questions were, oh, it's not my job. 
The second is I finish my part of the ticket. Third was, uh, let's say, let's go play some uh, sport uh, because, uh, uh, you know, we don't care about uh, anything. Uh, team uh, work is uh, super important, uh, but uh, outcomes, uh, well, they, they will come if we are a good team. Honestly, it proved to me that even if you have a perfect team, everybody likes each other and everything is working fine, uh, they doesn't uh, need to result with uh, something which is uh, converting to, let's say, useful product. And when you, by long time, this is not, you know, a situation which uh, break down in a few months even. It lasted uh, more. Uh, in a long run, what happens? Well, the product we are building is decreasing in, uh, let's say, popularity in App Store, conversion rates are falling, and then the problem starts. And when the problem starts, usually it's already, you know, late on this scale to do anything unless the measures are drastic ones. Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually a very important part of the dynamic that uh, we need to be uh, aware might happen, which is that when the team loses motivation, it will have an impact downstream on the quality and the impact of the product on their customers, on the, the product's customers. And if we don't do the work of keeping that motivation, and of course, we can do this in many different ways, like, you know, sharing the vision, visiting customers, bringing customers in for the team to talk to them, like really creating that empathy towards the customer, uh, which is something we can do together with the product owner. But exactly. if we don't do it, there is a risk that it might go away and we stop caring, meaning the team stops caring about the impact. Exactly. I totally agree with you. Uh, I, now, I would say uh, bring customer and the team close as possible, as many times as possible, would be, let's say, answer with hindsight few years later, you know. Absolutely. But that's why we have you here, so that others can benefit from that experience and be ready for it. So thank you for thank you very much for sharing this story, Boyan. Thanks. Tuesday is Team Day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.